Hi, I'm Therese Bird, and I'm a learning technologist with the University of Leicester. And today I'm going to be talking about some issues of getting started with sharing out OER, Open Educational Resources, as well as some issues around how to make sure they are open, especially if you are using different formats of documents. So first of all, where do you share these things from? If you are working out of an institution, such as a university or school, it's best if you can speak to your um, web administrator and get some space on a web server from which to serve out files. You just explain to them that you would like the world to be able to download this Word document or this PDF or this MP3 file and, uh, and to keep them. You don't really want a streaming server, which is where the media stays on the server and the person only views it. You would like to give the file to the user. And this is why we need some server space. It is best if you do host these materials in your own, on your own institutional server. However, if that's not an option, if you've got absolutely no server space that you can work with, you can buy solutions like that. For example, Amazon um, has very good prices in um, giving you server space from which you can serve out your materials. You can use a solution such as WordPress, which is a blog, but you can post uh, files there in order for people to download them. In order to improve visibility for your OERs, you can go somewhere such as Jorum. I highly recommend Jorum, uh, J-O-R-U-M. Um, you simply set up an account there and you uh, go in, create a new entry for your, for your item and you can put the item into Jorum to be served out, but it's good if you uh, simply put a link to the item that's living on your own web server. And why is that good? Because it brings people back to your website, and then it's clear that it's your university that created these items, and it just um, it helps you because they might want to come back to you and discuss them. However, Jorum does have space for you to uh, post items there. So if you absolutely have no way to be serving out uh, materials from your own institution, you can post them on Jorum. So the next question we want to ask is, in what formats should I be sharing out my materials? Well, if you think of the three basic kinds of ways in which people will be consuming these files, text, audio, and video, we can take each one in turn. So for text, um, the most common way to be sharing out um, OER might be PDF. And you might say that PDF is arguably not even really an open way of sharing uh, because it's proprietary. It is proprietary. You need that little bit of software from Adobe or from Apple Preview to, uh, to, to, to read these documents of PDF. But because those um, Adobe Reader and Apple Preview are free, um, it's a moot point. We could be arguing forever. I think PDF is not a bad way to share out your document because you know everyone will be able to read it. The next way is simply sharing out a Word document. Is, is that proprietary? Yes. Um, it means that the person has to have Word. Um, if you do share out a Word document, save it as a .doc, I would suggest, rather than the .docx, because then you've got more of a chance that people will be able to open it and read it. You may also, I would recommend that you save it also as an RTF, rich text format. The strange thing about it is if you are using Word, if you're formatting your document in Word and you save it as an RTF, then that makes the file size really swell up. But at least you've got the, um, the plus side is that the person who's reading it, um, you know, they can use anything. They don't need Word in order to open your, your document. It is good to give out a version uh, of your document in something like a .doc or a .rtf in addition to PDF. Why? Because it's much easier for the recipient to open it and change it. 
to add their own information and add their own logo or some such. And if we are wanting our materials to be repurposed, then it's best if we provide a format such as that. Now moving on to sound, I recommend MP3. We're going to get a little bit into the question of multimedia now. Um, can you dish out your MP3s through iTunes or iTunes U? And are they still uh, open? Well, yes, they are. Because if you dish them out through iTunes U or iTunes, the recipient simply has to open up the folder where their iTunes material is landing on their computer. And there it is. It's just an MP3. Can you repurpose an MP3? Well, of course you can. You simply open it in Audacity, and you can change, add, add your own comments at the beginning of the lecture, for example, export again as MP3, and it's a repurposed OER. Another way of sharing out sound files, which I could recommend, would be Audioboo or SoundCloud. And these are good uh, ways of sharing out if you don't have your own server. Um, you can even record in Audioboo and in SoundCloud, record right in the browser. And there you are, you're sharing out your open materials. Moving on to video, well, the simplest one is YouTube. Are YouTube videos OER? Yes, of course, because you can download them uh, as MP4s. Can you edit an MP4? Yes, it's a bit tricky, but you can. I'm a great believer in using iMovie, which is, of course, Apple only. Um, but it is very simple. You just load the, the little video clip into iMovie, and it's not hard at all to edit, to add a little bit more. I'm filming this on iMovie, and it's being recorded from my built-in webcam in my laptop, and nothing could be simpler. Similarly with iTunes U, it's simply an MP4, you just open it in iMovie. Dishing out your video over YouTube and iTunes U are highly recommended because you've got great discoverability there. Um, are OER materials discoverable using iTunes U? Well, yes they are. You could say that they're more discoverable than YouTube because they reach countries where YouTube is blocked. Many young people use YouTube as a search engine, so that's a very good way for you to be um, sharing out your materials. Copyright is, of course, important. If you are sharing out your materials, you need to specify your copyright. You need to choose which flavor of Creative Commons you wish to be sharing uh, out your materials through, and make sure that that is clearly labeled. On YouTube, you can say, that you want this to be um, listed as having a Creative Commons copyright. Similarly on iTunes U, if you are posting materials out, just make sure that the license is very clear. You are saying that uh, this is a Creative Commons, and it's best to just actually have that logo right in the video at the, at the end or something like that. Similarly on with sound, uh, wherever you post it, you simply say that this is being released under whatever flavor of Creative Commons, and it's ideal if you also state that at the beginning or at the end of your sound file, your mp3. And of course, going back to text, it's very simple to just um, include that uh, CC logo at the bottom of your uh, file, and then it's clear what license you are using. So I hope this has been a helpful overview to get you started with sharing out your open educational resources. And I hope you'll have fun doing it and you'll network with many other people who make use of your materials and learn tips and tricks from them as well. And we all are just learning from each other. So from Therese Bird, bye for now.